Oh, hi. I didn't expect you so soon. Welcome to another episode of In Range. Today we're going to read a book together, Why Mommy Carries a Gun, by Stephanie Rogish and Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. If you don't know who Dave Grossman is, he designed the philosophy called Killology. Killology is what it takes to psychologically be able to kill a person in combat. David Grossman's never killed anyone in combat, but he's considered an expert and has trained elite law enforcement and police across our entire land and civilians as well. He also coined the term sheepdog. Sheepdog is the idea that you, as a gun carrier, are responsible for all those around you who can't defend themselves. And that's why mommy carries a gun. So this is a really special copy signed by Colonel Grossman himself, and it's got Bible verse references in it. Luke 22, 36, and there's Bible verse references all through it. So when I find them, I'm gonna put them into the slides for you. So let's first look at Luke 22, 36. Okay, let's move on. Author bios, I already sort of told you about that. We don't need to go there. But here's the story right here. There's a house. It says, there are sheep in the world. There are gentle creatures who could never harm anyone on purpose. There are wolves. They do not care about others. They can and will harm the sheep. Then there are the sheep dogs. These brave creatures will protect others from the wolf. This is the home of the shepherd family. Dad is away on a business trip. Mom and Max are home alone. There's mom and she's doing the dishes. Mrs. Shepherd heard a knock on the front door. She wondered who it could be at eight o'clock at night. Eight o'clock at night, a knock on your door is very suspicious. She wasn't expecting anyone at this hour, so it made her feel uneasy. Before going to the door, she reached for her handgun. She kept in her purse. He didn't add unsecured, but I added. She kept unsecured in her purse. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, there's Max looking at mom going to the door. When she closed the door, oh, did I miss a page? Man, hold on, let's get back. Nope, I didn't. When she closed the door, she noticed Max was out of bed and peeking around the corner. Mama, why did you have your gun out, Max said. I wasn't sure who it was. I wasn't expecting anyone this time of night. With Daddy out of town, it's my job to keep us safe. My handgun is simply a tool to help me. Oh, look, there they are snuggling together. Was that a bad person at the door, asked Max. Mrs. Shepard kissed him on the forehead. No, dear, not a wolf. Just a salesman. But I know there are wolves out there, and I couldn't live with myself if a wolf came and hurt you. That is why mommy carries a gun. Most moms would lay down their lives for their babies, but a sheepdog mom has the tools and training to defend her pups. She tucked him in and gave him another kiss goodnight. There's Max out in public looking at a no gun sign. A few days later, Max and his dad decided to get ice cream after school. As they were about to enter the shop, Mr. Shepard noticed a sticker on the door. We can't go in here, Max. The sheep think a sticker like this will stop bad guys, but it won't. His dad explained, because bad guys don't follow the rules. Here they are sitting with their ice cream and there's a reference to a Bible verse right here. And if a wolf came in to rob this store, Max said, you wouldn't be able to protect me or the other sheep in there. Dad, I really don't want ice cream. Let's go to the outdoor shaved ice stand by the park instead. Maybe ice cream stores are too dangerous for Max. That's a great idea. Hey, Max, the fact that mommy and I carry guns is our family's private business. Remember, we don't talk about it with anyone else, okay? We keep secrets in this family. Max hugged his dad, feeling safe by his side. Oh no, this doesn't look like a good scene. What's going on here? One day at his friend Butch's house, the boys found a gun. I'm surprised dad left this sitting here. Maybe I should take it to him, Butch said. No, Butch, Max exclaimed, remember the rules. Don't ever touch a gun without an adult. Leave the area and always tell an adult if we see a gun lying around. Butch smacked his palm to his forehead. Oh yeah, I was thinking about helping my dad be responsible. I forgot about my responsibilities. There they are talking to dad. Max and Bush let Mr. Barker know his gun was still on the table. Wow, Mr. Barker leaves his guns laying around unsecured just like Max's mom. 
Oh gosh, said Mr. Barker. I was distracted when the phone rang. That's very irresponsible of me. I'll make sure it never happens again. Boys, thank you so much for doing the right thing. Oh, here we are at the park, and here's another Bible verse hidden in the artwork. Later, the boys found a couple sticks in the yard, and pretending they were guns, began playing cops and robbers. Their neighbor, Flossie, was riding on by her bike when she saw them playing. What are you two doing, she asked in horror. There they are, having a conversation. Playing cops and robbers, Max exclaimed before falling to the ground, clutching his side. Butch smiled broadly while pretending to holster his stick. That's right, there's a new sheriff in town. Both boys started laughing. Flossie, obviously disgusted by what they were playing, asked, Why would you play such a terrible game with those things? Here they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're getting ready to learn killology. Mm, yeah. Maybe there was a day when if a man was asked for an ass whooping, it's a cop's job to give it to him, yes? What do you mean they're just sticks we see? Max snapped his stick in half. We're just pretending. Flossie had her hand on her hip. Playing pretend guns will make you more violent. That's what my parents told me. No, it won't, Butch replied. Does wearing a tiara make you a real princess? No, I'm just pretending, she said sheepishly. Wait, sheepishly because she's a sheep. Mm. Here we go. Exactly, we're just pretending too, said Max. I know I'm going to be a sheepdog when I grow up. I want to protect people. I might even grow up to be a hero like Sergeant York or Wyatt Earp. Once you've made the decision to take a human life, you're a transformed creature, you're a predator. What does the predator do? They kill. Yeah, Butch added, and David Crockett and Audie Murphy, they were pretty awesome. Flossie smiled, and don't forget about Annie Oakley. She did some amazing shooting with her guns. She picked up a stick and a pine cone. Here, Butch, hold this out in your hand. I'm gonna do a trick shot. Yeah, cause that's, that's how you teach kids to shoot, is you hold targets in your hands and then shoot them out of your hands. Because when they can do that, that means they're really good. Oh, I gotta get to the next page. All right, oh, look at this. Second Amendment. In America, each and every citizen has important rights or, or freedoms. The Second Amendment is one of those rights. The rights are in quotes, interesting. This says all citizens can keep and bear arms. We believe that an armed person is a citizen, an unarmed person is a subject. That means Americans are allowed to buy guns, use guns, or carry a gun with you in most places. Here we go, here we go, here, 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 yep. see, here's a permit that lets you have your rights. Responsible gun owners use their tools for personal protection, sport shooting, and hunting. No matter what laws you make, bad guys will get their filthy paws on a gun just because they will break the law. They don't, they don't get the permit for their rights. Mm -mm, no, not at all. Strict gun laws just create places where good people can't protect themselves. My parents and responsible adults who have taken the time to train with their guns and they've learned how to handle and store them safely, apparently except when they leave them on the table or in their purse. They've also learned about gun laws in our state. Look, this concealed weapon permit has another Bible verse on it. Yeah. And in our nation, kids are taught what to do when they find a gun. They know they should never touch any type of firearm without an adult. You should immediately find a grown up if you find a gun just like we did. Our country's amazing and unique. The Greeks had their Spartans. Well, don't want to be a kid around them too much. Uh, in England, they still tour stories of King Arthur and the knights and the paladins. In Japan, they talk about the great samurai. Yeah, samurai were awesome. They went around all over Japan and oppressed people. In fact, if you didn't follow the rules of the king or the emperor, the samurai would kill you. Yeah, samurai were awesome. Yep. Oh, and karate masters to this day. Oh. But in America, we honor the Minutemen, Davy Crockett, Wyatt Earp, and so many more. I didn't know that Wyatt Earp was a Minuteman. Hmm, maybe they're talking about him then. We'll talk about that here. All right, here we go. Look at that, cannons and flag. Our nation was born with muskets and cannons in a revolution we celebrate every year on the 4th of July. We carved, we carved our rights to have our guns in the DNA of our nation with the Second Amendment. Our nation's heroes are gunfighters. 
there we are. Some sheep dogs. Sheep dogs. We love our families and our country so much that we feel it is our duty to always be ready. For most Americans, the ultimate love for your country is not to fight in a war, not to sacrifice your life, but to live a life of sacrifice. We know with proper training, we have the skills and tools to save innocent lives at the moment of truth. And as parents, it is our responsibility to raise our children to become the next generation of sheepdogs. You're a sheepdog too out there. All right, here we go. Here's more, more sheepdogs. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that Colonel Grossman was a furry. Did you? Very interesting. Worldwide, politicians and wealthy people have armed security guards to keep them and their families safe. But in most nations, individual citizens are left helpless and unable to defend themselves. Whoa. In America, we can be our own armed society. There's no elite class of people because we are the ones who run this country. In our nation, we have the same right to armed security as the president. And wow, the Secret Service protects my home? I didn't know that. That's really cool. And we can provide the protection for ourselves and our loved ones. That's what being a sheepdog in America is all about. Oh, and now it goes through a list of sheepdogs throughout history. I wonder if I missed any Bible verses. I'll check later. Here we have the Minutemen. Yeah. First sheepdogs, I guess, right? Whoa. The Minutemen were individual armed citizens ready to, ready, ready to grab their muskets and assemble to fight for liberty at a moment's notice. Davy Crockett. He used a Kentucky rifle as a sheepdog. I didn't know that all these historical figures were, sh were, were furries. Wow. Right. And here's a, hist a historically inaccurate representation of the Alamo. When the fight at the Alamo happened in Texas, that hump wasn't there. It was added later. So I guess that we weren't worried about history in this book. All right, go move on. Harriet Tubman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did she carry? She carried a small pocket pistol and a Springfield 1861 rifle. Hmm. She's famous for the Underground Railroad. We have other episodes on InRange about the Underground Railroad. I'd advise looking at those instead of this book because it's just more in depth. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wyatt Earp. Yes, everyone's favorite sheepdog. In fact, the prototype of what Colonel Grossman would probably call Killology today. He used a Colt Peacemaker revolver? Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and there's a quote here, a historically accurate quote from the theme song from the TV show, The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory. And long may his story be told. Right there, quote from a TV show in this book about sheepdogs. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, Annie Oakley, you know, she was an incredible marksman. There she is, shooting targets out of the sky. She used all the sorts of stuff. Uh, Sergeant Alvin York. Ooh, he's capturing a really bad dog right here. That's, that's a wolf. That's a wolf. Sheep dog? Wolf. Can you tell the difference? Okay. All right. Uh, greatest American hero of World War I. Audie Murphy, right there. There's Audie Murphy with a belt fed, 50 cal. Yep. Um, his, some of his most, he was after the war, he became a most famous movie star. Some of his most notable films was The Red Badge of Courage in 1951, Gunsmoke in 1953, and To Hell and Back, a 1955 true life account of his life, where he plays himself. We have Eleanor Roosevelt. She's a sheepdog. Yeah. And we've got, what else we got here? <gasps> Chris Kyle. Chris Kyle was also a furry. You can see that right here. See? Colonel Grossman lets us know these things. We wouldn't have known that without his work. Chris Kyle used a Mark 12 designated marksman rifle, an M4 carbine, a 300 Winchester Magnum, and a Sig Sauer P22 pistol. So right here is a section for you if you had this book to draw who your hero is. Right here, who's your hero? Maybe you in the audience would like to draw pictures of your hero and let us know, even though you don't have a copy of the book. So, all right. Well, that's amazing. What an incredible... What an incredible book for kids. Look, there's quotes in here uh, from all sorts of interesting thinkers for children. Here's one from Colonel Jeff Cooper. Of golf courses, a willful and deliberate misuse of a perfectly good rifle range. <laughs> he 
he was always so funny. What else do we got here? Uh, Robert Heinlein, an armed society is a polite society. Oh, here's one from Colonel Grossman himself. Hang up your golf clubs, America, and start hitting the range. Colonel Grossman has an issue with golf, golfing. It's really weird. <gasps> and here's all the Bible verses if we didn't catch them while we were reading the book. But I'm going to splice a bunch of them in for you. In fact, I think they missed one that I'm going to splice in as well. Well, thank you, Colonel Grossman, for writing this book, Why Mommy Carries a Gun. And I'd like to thank my Patreon supporter for sharing this with me. He sent it to me so we could read it to you. And it was very special to have a signed copy. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff, consider supporting InRange on Patreon. We are a completely crowdsourced project. No overlords, no corporates, no advertisers, just you, the viewers, which makes us be able to read books like this to you. If you can't, I, I understand, just find one of our multiple distribution points. You can find them all at inrange.tv slash watch. And more importantly, share with your friends. Thanks. Whenever we survey cops about use of deadly force, they consistently tell us that number one concern is what? Begins with an L. Lawsuits, liability, lawyers, I'm gonna get sued. Do you understand you can be sued for not shooting? Don't be afraid of being sued. Everybody gets sued. Just a chance for overtime. <laughs>